Hi everyone, welcome to Dashboard Fridays, the first episode of season two. We've been recommissioned, not by Netflix unfortunately, still just a squared up, squared up webinar. Today I'm joined by Mike, who I'm sure all of you Dashboard Fridays fans will remember from season one when he came in to talk about Zendesk. And hey, it's a repeat, Mike's back to talk about Zendesk. But this season is all about Squared Up Cloud, our new SaaS product. Um, and the plugins for it. So loads more, loads more um, topics we can cover, loads of great dashboards. In a lot of cases, much easier to get set up and started um, than in our on-premise product. Um, so yeah, Mike, welcome back to Dashboard Fridays. Let's, um, we'll Thanks have a chat time. through your dashboard. Um, so yeah, remind everybody, I, I think we probably all know what Zendesk is, but just give us a quick reminder of sort of what we do here at Squared Up with Zendesk. Yeah, so Zendesk is the support application that we use here. So whenever any of our customers raise a ticket, requesting support or assistance, comes into Zendesk, um, either for our email or our website, uh, comes into a group queue, and then my team basically, you know, take the tickets from there. And that's how we reach out to customers to hopefully address their issues, which hopefully there aren't many of. But uh, yeah, that's the tool that we use here. Great. Thank you very much for that. So I've got the dashboard up um, on screen for everybody to see. Um, this is the out of box dashboard for the for the plugin, right? So anyone adding the plugin will will get this view, and it just it just works out of the box, I guess. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, so the way we've configured all the tiles, uh, there's nothing specific to squared up. It's just send desk space. Um, so you can see here the top one ticket count. Anyone that's using send desk will obviously have a count of tickets that have been created. Um, we then move over to sort of you know those tickets broken down by days. Uh, we then have a list of all the tickets, um, which nicely has the link enabled as well. So if I was to click here, it would allow me to go straight into Zendesk to see actually the full details on the ticket. Um, and then just ticket form, status, taken by engineer, and average reply time. So all data that's standard to you know anyone that's using Zendesk, basically. Great. Okay. So yeah, it's useful out-of-box dashboard, lots of good sort of summary stuff. Why Why did you need to build a dashboard in Squared Up in the first place? Um, you, surely Zendesk has dashboards, right? They do, yeah. Um, and it's it's sort of, you know, obviously start with, we should use our own tools. Um, it's always a good place to start. But uh, yeah, Zendesk, you know, it, it requires a license to sort of go into their reporting side. So it's not necessarily available to everyone. Um, at least with this, you know, I can sort of create a dashboard. And if I want anyone else to edit it, they can obviously come in and, you know, edit it as well. Um, reason for doing it, uh, we like to share data uh, within the company. So once a month, we have a sort of wrap up on a Friday where, you know, the rest of the business wants to know how busy support were, you know, are we hitting our SLAs, you know, what areas of the product the tickets coming in on, and, you know, what products, whether it be our dashboard server or the cloud product, you know, where, where are the sort of majority of tickets coming in? So it's, it's an easy way for me to sort of show this on a nice wall screen or so to the rest of the business to see. Great. So visibility is kind of a, a big part of it. Uh, are there any other benefits to doing it in Squared Up? Um, I suppose, you know, if I wanted to pull in data from other applications as well. So, for example, um, we use uh, an app called Delighted for our CSAP. It means I can create a dashboard that combines data from that as well as send us. So, yeah, it means I can have it all in one place rather than having to go to separate apps or, you know, show separate reports. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, Zendesk obviously has built in tools for measuring customer satisfaction, doing surveys, that kind of stuff. But yeah, we, we do it externally along with our along with our MPS. So yeah, you, you don't lose out. Um, in fact, you can, you know, you bring in, bring in all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what we say, isn't it? A single pane of glass. So the ability to sort of, you know, have everything in one place. That's it. Is there anything worth sharing on sort of setting up the plugin? Any Any specific steps or tips or tricks, that kind of thing? Yeah, so if I, I'll just quickly go to uh, the plugin here. So go into settings, here's my plugin. I just go to the edit. Really straightforward. Um, basically, all you need to put in is your organization name. So for Sendesk, it's normally your organization.sendesk.com. We just require the organization bit. Then your user account on Sendesk, and then the API token key that you basically created. And that's it. That, you know. Um, you click on test and update, that should come back to say it's been successful and then you're ready to go. Basically. Yeah, perfect. 
and the, the API tokens that I think the tool tip tells you sort of where to get that, but it's just admin center and then integration. So I think something like that. That's right. Yeah. So we've got these helpful little tips here. Yeah. By each one telling you what sort of information we're requiring there. So. Great. So the, um, the, the Outbox dashboard obviously is a great way to get started. You sort of immediately get that, get, get that insight into your, your Zendesk account. This isn't the wall screen that we show in the office, right? This isn't the, the view that we use internally. So can, can we take a look at sort of what you built sort of from this, what, where, where you took this to internally? Sure, yeah. So I have another dashboard here, sort of acting as like a monitoring dashboard that we have on the screen. Um, I want to be able to see when tickets come into the team um, and, you know, how long they've sat there and been, you know, whether they've been picked up or not. So I've got this other dashboard here, which um, once again, basically sort of, so this is live data again. It's telling me how many tickets have come in this month. Obviously, we've just started a new month, so it's quite small. Um, how many active tickets? So those are tickets that are waiting on the team to actually do anything, whether that's, you know, a new ticket or a ticket where a customer's come back to us and it's on us to respond. Um, we then have our sort of count of pending customers, so how many open tickets where we're waiting on the customer. And then I've got these sections here where I'm basically using the status blocks um, defined against our sort of SLA. So uh, here, this is the sort of waiting on a reply back. So tickets that have been open for a little while. Um, if they're red, annoyingly two are, um, it means they've gone past that four hour response. Uh, if it's yellow, three hours. If it's green, it's less than three hours. So that information, um, you know, to, to actually make those status blocks, we need some concept of a, of a health state. How do you actually make that health state? Because it, it's not, you know, the Zendesk isn't returning saying like healthy, warning, critical, right? So how, no, how, do, how do you um, get that? How does that work? Yeah, what's what's really nice is if I go into edit dashboard here and I go to edit one of the tiles, um, we have our analytics page. So this is the sort of information that's currently being returned when we just made the web API query to Zendesk. So as you can see, it's just, you know, the actual tickets, subjects, a created, created update and an updated app. So as you say, no, no status. Um, but what we're able to do there is that data is stored in a table. We can then write our own query, which I've done here, which basically just says, okay, get the current time in minutes and compare what the difference is with when it was last updated. And here you can see if it's less than 180 minutes, then give it a new you know, value of success. If it's uh, less than 240, but greater than 180, give it a warning and anything else, an error. Um, so then you can see here, those four tickets, I've now got a new column called SLA with the status indicators, which then I can then, when I go to visualization, I can select the blocks and then there we go. It's picking those up based on the blocks. So just by virtue of having a label and now having a health state, you can use the blocks visualization as well instead of the grid. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a nice impactful way of sort of highlighting, you know, something's, something's worth looking at. The blocks are always a good tile for doing that with. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's nice um, just to show that, you know, just because we get data back in one form, you know, with the analytics, we're obviously allowed to manipulate that to sort of display it how we really want to sort of be able to see it. Yeah, nice. That's great. And I, I think just to avoid it, in, in case we show any customer data, don't scroll down, but you can see at the bottom there, a couple of those tiles that we talked about before where yeah. you're, oh, perfect, yeah, where we're, we're pulling in data from, from another source from, from Delighted in this case to show, yeah, customer satisfaction over, over time. 100% obviously, always brilliant. <laughs> the last 30 days at least, but well, yeah, yeah, as you exactly. say, the, the, the top tiles are pulling the data from the Sendesk plugin and then these two are from the uh, web API that we're using to go out to um, Delighted. Nice. Um, we won't give away too much about how you make those that illicit image tile in the top corner, but I'm sure if anyone is interested in the ask support, Mike might let you know. Um, is yep. there anything else that you wanted to share about the dashboard or should we should we wrap it up? Um, I mean, just quickly, I suppose, to go back to the ticket one. Um, I mean, it's easy enough to just change as well through the day. So as I say, I've got current month. Obviously, that's just today, but I can also go back to you know, the last seven days. And it's all very responsive how it shows it. Um, you can obviously go around and change the visualizations. I've just tried to split it up to sort of make full use of the ones that are available there. But um, yeah, uh, very easy to use. Um, no longer having to write really long winded sort of API queries or that because we've created the data stream sort of out of the, block, out of the box for you to be able to do it. 
Nice. Um, we're just on the data streams. Are, are there any um, any that any that aren't used in this? Any that we use internally? Anything useful? Any configurable ones worth highlighting? Yeah. So if I just edit this dashboard, and for example, if I go to create a new tile, um, go to configure. So yeah, I'll just say okay, the scope. Uh, so I'm going to use the SendS plugin, the uh, SendS support plugin, and then here are the what we were just discussing about the you know out of the box sort of data streams. But at the bottom here, you'll see there's the custom ticket search, um, which allows you to basically, uh, you know, add additional details into like a API query string that you would use um, if if the ones that we you know provide you out of the box aren't sufficient enough. Yeah. So any, anything custom, it's just Zendesk's own query format, right? Ticket colon new requested and greater yep. than a certain date, that kind of thing. So yeah, anything anything specific. The other the other data streams that were there before you'd chosen any scope, those ticket metric ones, they're the like the big detailed reporting uh, data streams, right? Yeah, so for, for example, the one where I showed what the average response, their uh, first response is to a ticket, um, that's just pulling like the minutes, which is from their um, uh, ticket metrics uh, API string. Um, as you say, we're not pulling all the data back, we're just pulling certain bits back, but it allows us to yeah do the calculations on times like that. Whereas right, the... So the Sorry, go for it. I was just going to say, whereas the generic search API allows you to get the actual ticket data as well. Sure. So this is just the stats, right? The, those ones are just That's the right. stats. Uh, what are the what are the scope options that this plugin that that you get? Yeah. So um, so what we're doing here, we're importing uh, you know standard SendS ones, so the brands. So uh, that can be you know uh, for us it's squared up, but you know if you had multiple sort of brands within SendS that would pull those in. Um, groups that you've defined so there's like a in ours there's a customer support and there might be a product managers group a sales group that we've put individuals in um, any tags ticket forms we use that to uh, identify different products so when a ticket's logged we can see which product it's been logged against and then the users uh, scope as well and so with those scope objects, you could get all the tickets just belonging to yourself or all the tickets that have been tagged with a keyword or all that kind of stuff. Correct. Yeah. If I selected users, that would show me the list of users that I've got from SendS, but I could then go in and say, I just want these four people. And then in the data stream, say tickets created, and it will just do it for those four people that I've selected. Nice. Perfect. Um, okay. I'll go ahead and, and wrap us up. Uh, we're getting up to time there. Um, so yeah, th thanks everyone for watching. Thank you again to to Mike for for joining us for the inaugural episode of season two. Um, you can check out um, our new dashboard gallery, which is all about Squared Up Cloud at squaredup.com slash dashboard gallery. And as always, Community Answers is there, um, our community of thousands of experts um, with a, a, a new a new topic that you can post into with just questions for, for any cloud platform, questions about SQL analytics, monitoring health rollups, whatever it is you have questions for jump on in. Um, but yeah, thanks again. Uh, thanks, Mike. And we Thank will you. see you next time. Thanks. Bye.